Good morning. It's lovely to see us all waking up little by little, poco a poco. The coffee's doing its work in us, and so is the Holy Spirit. Um, it's my delight, alongside Kate Williams, Roger Holland, and so many other incredible musicians and liturgical movement ministers, readers and coordinators, to um, pray with you, lead you in prayer this morning for Saturday morning praise. To wake up our voices, I'd love for everybody to turn to page 44 in your program book, and we're going to warm up with the gathering song for this morning, which is on page 45. Praise be to you, based on the beautiful prayer of St. Francis, the canticle of the creatures. The refrain sounds like this. All the earth is yours, O God, and sings your praise, woven in communion by your love. Let our praise for you be shown in tenderness in all we do. Praise be to you. So let's break that down. I'll sing a phrase and then you. It sounds like this. All the earth is yours, O God, and sings your praise. Try that. All the earth is yours, O God, and sings your praise. Woven in communion by your love. Try that. Woven in communion by your love. Let our praise for you be shown in tenderness. In all we do, praise be to you. Let our praise. Let our praise for you be shown in tenderness. In all we do, praise be to you. Let's hear the whole refrain together. Ready? And. All the earth is yours, O God, and sing to And in the verse, you have this very simple response. Praise be to you. Try that. Praise be to you. Praise be you in all your creatures. Praise be to you. Through brother, son, our radiant light. Praise be to you. Praise be you through sister moon. Praise be to you. And through the stars you form them bright. the refrain. All the earth is yours, O God, and sings your praise, woven in communion by your love. Let our praise for you be shown in tenderness in all we do. Praise be to you. Beautiful. We invite you to join in, in that and all of the prayers and music this morning, and if you sing something different than we taught you, we just call that harmony. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be blessing, glory, honor, and power forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Lord. You see, God is with us. To Emmanuel, we give praise. God is with us. Glory to your name. When we see God in action, we laugh and we rejoice. <laughs> Oh, glory. We sing our hymns to God. We give praises to our God. Glory to your matchless name, O oh God. We praise your name. Come on. God is in his holy place. God is in his holy place. God who unites souls who dwell Himself is mine and strength. Himself. 
and strength. He himself is mine and strength to his peace. if you're just joining us, the songs and prayers for today's uh, Saturday morning praise can be found on page 44 of your Congress program book. Whether you're here in this space or joining us via live stream, we invite you to rise in spirit or body and all in voice as we join in prayer together. Oh, 
Be loved, bask in the love of Jesus this morning, feeling its warmth like the rising sun. Be loved, let the love of God continually transform you. Be loved, through the Holy Spirit, become love to those around you. Before her death in 1990, Servant of God, Sister Thea Bowman, a frequent visitor to our Religious Education Congress, inspired all of us to be people grounded in love for one another and to be a church that embraces God's word. Let us continue our prayer by listening to her words. And so we come together here, calling one another to faith and hope and love and conversation and remembering the words of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. 
to set the downtrodden free and to proclaim the year, Lord's year of favor here and now. Pope Francis has been an instrument of God's care for all creation and for all God's people. Embrace this message given to us by our Holy Father in his allosophic exhortation, Christi via vit. Very first truth I would tell each of you is this. God loves you. It makes no difference whether you have already heard it or not. I want to remind you of it. God loves you. Never doubt this. Whatever may happen to you in life, at every moment, you are infinitely loved. While serving the poorest of God's poor, St. Teresa of Calcutta taught us what it means to be a faithful and courageous disciple of Jesus Christ. Her words remind us how we too are called to love. We have been created to love and be loved, and God has become human to make it possible for us to love as he loved us. He makes himself the hungry one the naked one, the homeless one, the sick one, the one in prison, the lonely one, the unwanted one. As co-founder of the Catholic Worker Movement, Servant of God Dorothy Day championed the rights of the poor in our country and challenged us to be peacemakers throughout the world. She has left us a teaching on how to grow love. People say, what can one person do? What is the sense of our small effort? They cannot see that we can only lay one brick at a time, take one step at a time. We can be responsible only for the one action of the present moment. But we can beg for an increase of love in our hearts that will vitalize and transform these actions and know that God will take them and multiply them as Jesus multiplied the loaves and fishes. Oh, he earns yours, O oh God, and sings your praise. Woven in communion by your love, let our praise for you be shown in tenderness. You know we do. Praise be to Beloved, the prophet Zephaniah told his people about the impending devastation and death that would fall Jerusalem in the mid-sixth century before our Lord. Yet, he also told his people that Yahweh, the Lord, would keep them near to his heart even during the dark times. Hear and feel the expression of God's love for his people in Jerusalem then and his people here in Anaheim now. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. 
the Lord has removed judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, Zion. Do not be discouraged. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty savior who will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love and who will sing joyfully because of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Still choking with hate, persecuted ones. For you all the blessings of heaven away.
Please stand. Let us listen to the words of Saint Paul, remembering that we are loved and we are called to be love for the world. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, love is not pompous, it is not inflated. Love is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. Be Love does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Be Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Be Inspired by the work of Franciscan sister, Sister Maria Legol, our keynote speaker, Jessica Sarowitz, has dedicated herself to empowering underserved communities here in LA, in her native Honduras, and in some of the world's most dire places. Through her work in film, social impact investing, and philanthropy, Jessica is a model of deep faith who has embraced the call of the gospel of Jesus Christ to be a person rooted in his love. I introduce to you Jessica Sarowitz. We Okay, thank you. 
Buenos dias. Good morning. Dare to be loved. Déjate amar. So I want to tell you about sister Maria Rosa Legol. I want to tell you about my journey on the Camino de Santiago. And I want to tell you about the aha moments that I had along the way. Several years ago, I walked the Camino de Santiago Trail across northern Spain. It's at least a 100-kilometer hike, which actually is a ton of miles because the trail is very, very arduous. Um, it could be, it, you can go up, then you go down, then you go up and down and up and down. So, obviously, we didn't do it all in one day. There were planned stops along the way with time to sleep, rest, and regroup. In total, we did this for seven days. It was something that I had thought about doing for many years, not only as a pilgrimage, but also to see that part of the world differently. I was in the midst of producing a film about my spiritual mentor, Sister Maria Rosa Legol, or Soar as I knew her. Soar is actually sister in German. I'll explain why she was called that in a bit. Making the film brought up a lot of feelings about my relationship with God and how I wanted to honor Soar's lifetime of service. Sister, or Soar, was a remarkable woman. I met her when I was just eight years old. We immigrated from Honduras and my parents took me back for several mission trips. I knew from the moment I met her at that young age that she was an extraordinary person because she gave great hugs. And she also was bossing everybody around. Her commitment to her causes and her love and devotion to God were unparalleled. I mean, she was a force, especially when it came to the rights of children, those children who were abandoned, orphaned, abused, and the single moms and their families. Now, Sister had an immense love, but also a sense of humor. She once said, my orders come from above. The man who can give me orders has not been born. And I guess that means that when you're doing God's work, Jesus' work, there, you can't wait. There are no boundaries. It's abundant love, and you must respond. Soar herself was an orphan at a very young age in Honduras, who at six years old saw a group of German nuns ministering to the poor and knew that she wanted to serve God. So she asked those sisters at that tender age, sisters, sisters, can I join you? And in over her 70 years as a Franciscan nun, she rescued over 87,000 children and their families from poverty and gave them safe homes and an education. 
Sister Maria Rosa became lovingly known as the Mother Teresa of Latin America. <laughs> Sister never took no for an answer. One day, she needed that final signature from a donor so she could receive a grant to fund her first group homes for her kids. She finds out the donor is about to fly out of town. She hurries to the airport and is told, I'm sorry, sister, the donor just got on a plane. She sees the ladder has gone up, the propellers are going, and she doesn't think twice. She runs out to the tarmac and signals to the pilot, stop, please, I need to get on. She needs to get on that plane. What does that pilot do? Of course, he brings the ladder down. She runs up and everyone is startled seeing this nun running down the aisle. She finds the donor and gets that signature. Now, as she turns around, she sees a police escort coming for her. <laughs> and what do you think happens next? She starts blessing everyone on that plane. <laughs> now, that's a true story, how she once stopped the plane to get what she needed for her kids. So, it's 2019. I made the plan to hike the Camino de Santiago. But then we all know what happened. Ya sabe, es COVID. COVID is here. And that put the film and my trip on hold. Our team in Honduras was able to keep filming, but sadly, after beating it twice, Sister Maria Rosa died from COVID at the age of 93. Her loss was, I, I'm not even sure I can articulate what that felt like. To know that this force of God's radiance and goodness had passed, a huge loss, not only for me, but for so many communities around the world who loved her so much. Of course, quarantine was difficult for all of us. I personally went into my crisis, I call it mitigation mode. I leaned into our family foundation so we could support our communities, our nonprofit partners with bridge grants to pay for staff and programs so they could do the much needed work to keep people safe in their communities. Like many of us, I set up a neutral background and became a pro at Zoom. Something special also happened. I suddenly had time to read. Then I received a surprising invitation from my archdiocese for a Zoom book club led by Fernando Reyes and Sister Joan. We read the Holy See's encyclical letter on care of our common home about the devastating effects of climate change and our obligation as Catholics and humans to care for our environment we read about the expeditions of Lewis and Clark, about leadership and diverse talents needed in a journey through uncharted waters. I wasn't looking for her, but Sister Joan became another spiritual mentor for me, reading about the environment, nature, and journeys got me more and more excited for my trip on the Camino de Santiago. And 
whenever it would be. And then the time finally came. I had to train because as I said before, 62 miles is a ton of miles. My husband decided to join me and that was a joy and a blessing. And before we knew it, it was time to pack for the trip. We needed to carry the bulk of our things with us in a backpack. Here's the list of what was recommended to bring. And here's what my list looked like. <laughs> Only two pairs of socks? Seven days, really? I filled my backpack with everything that I knew that I could not do without. I even packed, I bet, I bet all of you would do the same thing. I even packed bread, a knife, and peanut butter and jelly. Because Latina mamas make sure no one is ever hungry. Nadie puede estar sin comer. So, the first day of the hike went well. It was exciting. Adrenaline was rushing. At the end of the day, I was tired, but knew I was accomplishing something. The only problem was that my back hurt. Yes, my backpack was heavier than I expected. While I prepared, I had not been training with a 40-pound pack of dead weight on my back in my training. That was a big mistake. On the second day, we visited a village and met the locals. While food was available, the menu along the trail was limited. Bread, cheese, ham, and the occasional grilled octopus. Now, my husband, we're, gonna, we're going back to him, has dietary restrictions. He's gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free, doesn't eat pork, and no shellfish. So basically, no come pan, queso, jamón, and well, there's only so many octopi tentacles a person can eat. <laughs> so, he's hungry. He was seen by a kind farmer as my husband hungrily stared at some grapes on a vine. My husband, in his desperation, he offered to buy some grapes, and the farmer said no. The farmer gifted him two handfuls of grapes to him, and boy, he was humbled, and he was so grateful. I mean, he was almost crying at that, you know, for him to be seen and for him to receive this bounty, this kindness. So he savored those grapes, he chowed down on them, and he did share them with us. We grew, as the days went on, more and more exhausted, and each day, the back pain grew and grew. But I was afraid to take things out of my backpack, out of fear I might need something and it wouldn't be there. By the morning of the third day, my legs felt like jelly, and the back pain was unbearable. And in that vulnerable moment, I had no choice. I emptied my backpack of all the extra stuff, and I would trust my fellow Camino travelers that we would take care of each other and I would have faith in God that I would be okay. And then it was like that aha moment. It became clear that my backpack carried more than just physical items. It bore the weight of anxiety, negativity, distrust, pain, grief, and past disappointments. This weight mirrored 
the heaviness of my spirit, I found solace in the support of my fellow travelers. I found solace in scripture. We actually um, had mass every other day um, after our, our walk, and also on the kindness of locals. I thought about what I learned from the books we read with Sister Joan and what she said about trusting nature and being more open to unknowns. Rather than being afraid, I would view uncertainties as delicious possibilities. And I thought about Soar, Sister Maria Rosa, and her belief that we were all God's children and connected. You have something I need. I have something you need. We essentially are in service to one another. I've been blessed many times beyond my wildest imagination. But for me, I know it's not just about money. Money is only a tool for addressing the world's needs. Whether it be children abandoned by desperate parents, indigenous people facing extinction, or the, just in our own neighborhoods, what we're seeing is people, communities, under tremendous stress and the global climate crisis that threatens our existence. In the same way that Christ welcomes and accepts all of us, we are called to welcome, accept, and serve others. And when we tune into this calling, it brings us purpose and meaning to our lives. I like to call it the God channel. If you don't have a loving and supportive community, just look around this room. How glorious it is. Spiritual mentors are everywhere ready to welcome and accept you, accept all of us. And we know that society thrives through service and deep connections, the core of trust and God's love. My Camino journey also made me realize fear often boils down to control. Do I have agency in my life? Do I have control? God grants us the freedom to choose and promises to always be there, whether we call upon him or not. Now that is the most important lesson sourced, instilled in me. A deeper faith in God against all odds. Faith is believing when things around us feel dark and heavy, God is with us and for us. We are God's children. How could it be otherwise? For those who haven't done something like a pilgrimage on the Camino Trail, I highly recommend it. You walk the trail, and yes, you're tired, and yes, you're hungry, and um, you get to the destination, which is the town of Santiago, where we, as Catholics, believe St. James is buried, one of Christ's original apostles. After you complete that 100-kilometer pilgrimage, you celebrate in the town square, you attend the most amazing, fulfilling, and spiritual mass with your fellow travelers, and then you do your confession. For me, it was a moment where it fully revived my soul and cleansed my body of all of that stuff that I was carrying through that metaphor of my backpack, my anxiety, my mistrust, my pain, my grief, everything I had carried to that point. And honestly, it was like a 
transformation. I felt like I had a baby soul again. Honestly, he was that powerful. If hiking doesn't interest you, choose something you've always thought about doing but didn't think was possible. Make the promise to yourself. Make the promise to love yourself. Make the promise and think it is possible. It will get done. You will get it done. Enlist friends and family to hold you accountable or even better, wrangle them like I did my husband to join you and go on your spiritual journey. You will be grateful that you gave yourself such a generous, healing gift. To be completely transparent, I did keep a few extra things in my backpack. On the last day, when we all needed some energy, we stopped along the path, and this Latina mama made sandwiches, the snackies, as I like to call them. It helped us all touch a moment of joy by breaking bread together, sitting on the warm earth, giving thanks and praise. And after that long day, everyone said, wow, you really saved me. I didn't realize how much I needed that. What a beautiful reassurance that we are never alone and that no matter how heavy your backpack is, always pack the peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just want to say I love this year's uh, message of be loved. They had the amar. Um, it is something that we all aspire to do, but be loved authentically for who we are. And like I said, I highly recommend going on a pilgrimage. There's so many ways to do it. Here in California, we have so many missions. You can walk with someone, read scripture, talk about um, you know, what is in your life happening. And it really is beautiful. It's a beautiful experience. And I hope that, you know, I just inspire you to think about it and make some plans for you to go on that journey, that spiritual journey with some people. And you will be of service to others on that journey. Believe me, you will be. So thank you. For the building up of the kingdom of God, I'm going to build it up, yes I will, until I get home.
Let us stand. And bless one another in love. If you feel comfortable, we invite you to place your left hand onto the shoulder of your neighbor. As St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Colossians, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, you must also do. And over all these, put on love, that is the bond of perfection. Lord, we give thanks for Jessica Sorwit and the inspiration of love she has given this morning and for all gathered here today. May we move forward in the love of Christ. For a quarter century, Sister Edith Prendergast, a religious sister of Charity of Ireland, led our Religious Education Congress with a passion for evangelization, catechesis, Celtic spirituality, and spreading the love of Jesus well beyond the walls of this arena. Her words continue to inspire us. God invites us to sink deeply into the realization that we are clothed in love and summoned beyond to join Jesus on the way. Ravished by God's boundless love, poured out in Christ through the power of the Spirit, we are summoned to reach out, to break boundaries, to taste what lies beyond. Filled to the brim with God's love, we are called to let our lives overflow with love into one another. Let us go forth in that love. And the church responds, Amen. Amen.